From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from Edmonton, Alberta, for the repose of the soul of her husband, Robert, for other deceased and living family members, for peace in the world, and in thanksgiving for the daily Mass. The second is an anonymous donor from Ottawa, for good health, deceased family and friends, and for the intentions of the viewers of the televised daily Mass. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in the abasement of your Son have raised up a fallen world, Fill your faithful with holy joy, for on those you have rescued from slavery to sin, you bestow eternal gladness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. A messenger came to David, saying, The hearts of the Israelites have gone after Absalom. Then David said to all his officials who were with him at Jerusalem, Get up, let us flee, or there will be no escape for us from Absalom. Hurry, or he will soon overtake us and bring disaster down upon us and attack the city with the edge of the sword. But David went up the ascent of the Mount of Olives, weeping as he went, with his head covered and feet barefoot. And all the people who were with him covered their heads and went up, weeping as they went. When David came to Bahurim, a man of the family of the house of Saul came out, and he came out cursing. He threw stones at David and at all the servants of King David. Now all the people and all the warriors were on his right and on his left. Shimei shouted whilst he cursed, Out! Out! Murderer! Scoundrel! The Lord has avenged on all of you the blood of the house of Saul in whose place you have reigned. And the Lord has given the kingdom into the hand of your son Absalom. See, disaster has overtaken you, for you are a man of blood. Then Abishai, son of Zeruiah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go over and take off his head. But the king said, What have I to do with you, you sons of Zeruiah? If he is cursing because the Lord has said to him, curse David, who then shall say, why have you done so? David said to Abishai and to all his servants, my own son seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjaminite? Let him alone and let him accurse, for the Lord has bitten him. It may be that the Lord will look on my distress and the Lord will repay me with good things for this cursing of me today. So David and his men went on the road. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and the disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gerasenes. And when he had stepped out of the boat, immediately a man out of the tombs with an unclean spirit met him. He lived among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any more, even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with shackles and chains, but the chains he wrenched apart, and the shackles he broke in pieces, and no one had the strength to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the mountains, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and bowed down before him, and he shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. For he had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? He replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. He begged him earnestly not to send them out of the country. Now there on the hillside a great herd of swine was feeding, and the unclean spirits begged him, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. So he gave them permission. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine, and the herd, numbering about two thousand, rushed down the steep bank into the sea and were drowned in the water. The swine herds ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and saw the demoniac sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had the legion, and they were afraid. Those who had seen what had happened to the demoniac and to the swine reported it. Then they began to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might be with him. But Jesus refused and said to him, Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and what mercy he has shown you. And he went away and began to proclaim in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And everyone was amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Jewish ritual practices separated the world into categories of clean and unclean. We can see in this story that Jesus has crossed well into the territory of the unclean. He is no longer among his fellow Jews, but has entered the land of the Gentiles. There he encounters a man possessed by demons who is living among the tombs of the dead. Nearby there is a herd of unclean pigs, the description of this possessed man that no chains could restrain, raving among the tombs and howling like a wild animal, would have evoked horror among the people of Jesus' day. That expresses the fate of all who live outside the ordered power of God. The demons living within this man have stripped him of every shred of dignity and humanity. He even seems to have lost the image of God in which he was made. Unlike other demoniacs mentioned in the gospel who still live among the community and had family and friends who cared for them, this man was driven out of the town, away from all human contact. It is a testament to the severity of his possession. The gospel tells us that the evil spirits within this man recognize Jesus as the Holy One of God, probably in response to a demand by Jesus to leave this man. So he runs up to Jesus and prostrates himself at his feet, which seems to suggest an act of worship. But when he speaks to Jesus, it sounds as if he is trying to ward off his power. The scene is really quite odd. The possessed man kneels before Jesus as a supplicant, but then he attempts to invoke God's name to drive Jesus away. Undeterred by this attempt, Jesus compels the demon to reveal his name, and he says he is called Legion, which suggests that there were over 2,000 demons living within that possessed man, the same number as the swine on the hillside. Realizing that they cannot stop Jesus from casting them out and afraid they may be sent into the darkness, 
the demons strike a bargain with Jesus. They ask to be sent into the pigs, which Jesus grants. But true to their nature, the demons cause the pigs to destroy themselves by stampeding into the sea. The man is cured and wants to follow Jesus, but Jesus tells him that he should stay where he is and spread the word throughout his country. Now, this ancient story can reveal a lot to us. We have demons of our own that possess us, such as fear, anger, lust, envy. They can take control of our lives and make us act out in inappropriate ways. Even though we try to chain them up and repress them, nothing seems to hold them back or dispel them. We often end up being ruled by emotions we don't understand, desires we can't fully satisfy, and the memories of past mistakes that seem unforgivable and distort our self-image and self-esteem. These personal demons can isolate us from our families, from our community, and make us appear corrupt, hateful, and self-destructive. And then along comes Jesus, who alone has the power to heal this fragmented mind and body. Many do not recognize him because they have put their trust in the power of psychiatrists, psychics, even talk show hosts. They take drugs and alcohol, they check into clinics and hospitals, they prostrate themselves before the scientific progress of modern medicine. But even modern medical science has made a notable discovery, the discovery of the place and power of religious faith in healing. More and more physicians have come to believe that the line between body and spirit can never be rigidly drawn. Physical, mental, and emotional ills have a close relationship with our spiritual state. Jesus can bring us to healing through faith. But even with faith, we may find it hard to give ourselves to him completely because we are pulled in the opposite direction by those clamoring voices which we are unable to call to order. There is also our great fear of allowing Jesus into our lives. As bad as our conflicted lives may seem, we have lived this way for so long that we are afraid to change. We would rather remain within this hysterical herd of people blindly rushing towards destruction than submit to his will and stand alone. But no matter how hard we try to control our personal demons or the demons inflicted upon us by the world, without Jesus, there can be no wholeness. Once we are free of our personal demons, we can be a great witness to others of God's power. Like the man in our gospel, we can go about telling others that if we trust in the Lord, we can be released from all those things that possess us and threaten to destroy our life. Let us now join our prayers together and ask God to help deal with the many conflicts which disturb and trouble human life. That we may be open to the presence of Christ and healing force of our lives, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That Christ will illuminate our lives and help us to trust in his power rather than the power of the world, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That all people acknowledge Christ as the one who can safely lead them through their doubt and confusion, we pray to the Lord. Lord that Christ may strengthen those in our television community and help them to trust in his healing power in times of personal crisis, we pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty Father, help us to witness to your healing power of faith so that through us you may touch the deepest needs of our brothers and sisters. We ask this through Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. We can share Christ Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Amen. Oh God, we ask you to receive the gift we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation dedicated to your name purify us, O Lord, and day by day bring our conduct closer to the life of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be saved. By Christ be made to last the life. Amen. With those of you at home, join with me now in this spiritual reflection of Father Pedro Arupe. More than ever, I find myself in the hands of God. This is what I've wanted all my life, from my youth. But now, there is a difference. The initiative is entirely with God. It is indeed a profound spiritual experience to know and feel myself so totally in God's hands. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation, and never cease to praise you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. 
May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Our thanks to our two donors for the gift of this Mass. If you'd like to sponsor a Mass or share in sponsoring a Mass, please call our office at 1-888-383-6277 for details.